Are we uh, recording? Yeah. But uh, no, it's like with... Yes, we're recording. But it's like somehow with, with Nightlight, like eventually we were going to... It's like the apex predator of our settings, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, eventually we were going to get to the point where we had a setting that was perfectly episodic where you can always change who is in it and who is a part of it. Yeah. It has, you know, eventually we're going to make a setting that would be the most fun for us to make. Right. <laughs> Cuz anytime you tell a story, anytime you tell a story in it, as as long as you maintain some parts of the framework, it's still nightlight. Right. But what happens in there it can be really really broad. I think the Ironwood is on that scale. Oh yeah, the Iron but the Ironwood is like three different settings. Yeah. Like the Ironwood is good too, but the Ironwood has a lot of weight. It has a lot of weight in it on the different settings. Yeah. Like they each have their own things that they're supposed to do. And they're also in a different voice. Yeah. Like mecha- like mechanically speaking, they're written in a in a different way than Nightlight. But I guess Nightlight is just young. Eventually Nightlight will have the same you know, it eventually does. Nightlight will have the same you know, well, it will, rule it, weight. Yeah, it'll get the same world building. Right. But it's in a, it is in a cool spot. It is in a cool spot right now. It is, yeah. Um, you were talking to Kara about it? Uh, oh, yeah. She was looking at the... I was showing her the first comic in the storyline. And she was asking me about the colors and... I was showing her... I'm hiding a bunch of stuff in this one. The palette? Oh, oh you mean like in the backgrounds? Yeah. Like um, what? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how hidden it is. She thought it was interesting. Like, so the, I guess it's the second comic where Grace is looking in uh, the dad's studio. Yeah. The door, he's let the kids paint all over his door. And, oh, that's really cool. You see, that's, that's a, that's a total dad thing. Yeah. So down at the bottom, it's just scribbles. And then oh. you can see them start to do shapes. And, oh, as they get taller? Yeah, and then stick oh, figures. Oh, jeez. And then they're doing handprints. And then up at the very top, there's uh, a couple Pre- hearts that were are from his wife, I think. And then he put a blue handprint over one, uh, one of the hearts for him wow. and his wife. Dude, that is fucking banging. That one is probably not that obvious, I guess. But it's... It's in there. It's a big idea. Yeah. Grace gets her mom's necklace. Oh, I see that. Oh, that is tasteful. Uh, her mom's favorite color is pink, and so Grace's glasses end up being pink. Uh, that's why Grace's mom's word balloons are pink. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely picked up on the color. And then, a lot of times, you see, this is the thing is a lot of times you're finishing these as we're going home. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, I'm looking at them on the phone, and I bet that that's not the appropriate. For new. this piece, I bet the phone's not appropriate. There's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, but it's like um, it's like when David Lynch yells at people for looking at movies on their phone. <laughs> you didn't watch a movie, no. Yeah, but I think it's what I think is really inter- I think that it's interesting how geometric you've done Grace's hair. Yeah, that was sort of a cool part of her character design. I thought, but that but that, but that was true. Like that came from the profile, right? Uh, that came from that first drawing of her. I did. They ended up being it just ended up being blocky, and uh, I don't know. I liked it. Yeah. I really like it, and I also like that it's sort of like, what would you call? It's like a, it's like a colored pencil or something. But what is this texture on the? I'm using stroke? chalks. Oh, chalk! That's it. I yeah. was like, where have I seen this before? And it's just, I'm just too close to it. Like my whole, you know, my garage and driveway are covered with this texture. Yeah, it's chalk and then pastels and just trying a bunch of different textures, and then trying different colored outlines. I don't know, it's just been fun to color. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, the glasses are so... God, her glasses are so cute. Yeah. It just works. It just works. All right. Let's jump down here. Oh, but yeah, so it's like when I... I was poking around the usual suspects for the game Moose. Okay. And uh, it seems like they're talking a lot about... You know, it's, it's like... And I remember this. Like when you'd go down to set up the booth... At mm. Comic Con, you can walk around and you can see all the like the Lego sculptures and like you yeah. can sort of get like a preview of everything that they haven't covered up. And even even then, before preview night, a lot of stuff is still covered up. Yeah, you know what I mean. God, when I just went right back to that moment of walking into that hall. Oh no, I can feel it. I actually feel it on my Ugh. skin. I just saw this. It's I just so saw a cold. picture. Yes, 
I just saw a picture, and I could even tell from this picture, right, yeah. that I was looking at something photographed in the hellish light of that evil fucking dungeon. Yeah. The, I could tell that I could tell from a picture someone else had taken that that diseased light was just hanging off of every fucking crevice of these things. It saps your energy. It does. It is it, it is enervating. You. It is vampiric and it's bitter ass fucking refrigerator cold. It's refrigerator cold and it's cuz it's you know, it's going to heat up. Well, when yeah, they yeah, add when they, when they add all those they do it. Yeah, when all those mortals come in. But when you get there first thing in the morning and you have to put on all your own shit that you brought so you don't freeze to death. Yeah, but yeah, for yeah. Me it's that when you walk in that door and it's all those same booths with the same like comic book art. You know, well, that, that for indeed. like a decade. Oh, yeah, indeed staffed by the same soulless liches. Yeah, that you know you have seen each day. I've got, I have got nothing but sympathy. I have got nothing but sympathy, and that's the thing. Uh, that show may be, you know, highly entertaining. Yeah, I mean, it may be possible to go physically to the show and enjoy it. I wouldn't know. I've never attended it. <laughs> I have never once gone to this show. It's never happened. I have only ever worked at this show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. That feels so good not to be there. Ugh. Just the, uh, the, the sickness. It, it, at a PAX, I feel like I'm doing something. I'm always doing. I've got a schedule. That, oh, yeah. Know, but, but, but what you know what gets done at PAX is pretty broad. I'm doing panels. I'm trading pins. I'm signing stuff yeah and listen i mean this has got nothing anybody who has ever come to the booth that's like my that's like my lifeline it's like i i, I can see their hey lo ho ho you know <laughs> like if if a motherfucker comes to the booth like they are making that show worth it for me but the show by itself well 90 percent of the time we're just sitting there alone <laughs> it's the two of us just watching people walk by like with a sense of increasing horror. Yeah. Now listen, but the only like, but there are there are positive memories too. When I say memories, right now I only have one. But I bet that I bet is, that if is yours Levin going over to Jack's non sports cards? <laughs> it wasn't Levin. Remember we 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 were able to encourage a third party. Or oh, that's we, right. It was that other guy. That's right. We were able to encourage. So, dear listener, you should know. That across, the <laughs> okay. So we are always sitting in the same place. So we've had the same booth there ever since we worked at Kiko's booth. We've you know, we had a, a different booth for a little while, and then eventually they sort of recognized that web comics were real, and they made a web comics pavilion um, or quarantine, depending on <laughs> what you might think um, about the medium. In the back, like right by the, when you go to the bathroom, you'd always go by him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. His, and, his, and honestly, I was happy because I'm one of these people that has to go to the bathroom more or less constantly, and so I was very happy to be placed by the by the bathroom. I would have accepted nice. a booth um, within a stall. But the name of his booth was Jack's Non Sports Cards, and we convinced a a reader to go over and ask for Jack. First, <laughs> no. Hold on a second. It's no, no, because you understand, dude. Listen, Jack is not as funny a name as his real name, oh. which is Mark. Oh, it's Mark's non-sports card. It's Mark's non-sports card. So we're like, you have to ask for Mark. <laughs> but, but but we have fantasized <laughs> for years about for doing years. This. I mean, coming up on like eight years of going over to his booth and asking Excuse him me, for is Mark various here? kinds of sports cards. Yeah, I'm Mark. Do you have a King Griffey ah. Jr. rookie card? <laughs> no. It's a non-sports card. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's why I put non-sports in the title of my booth. Oh. But we, we've invented... You got any hockey cards? <laughs> That's a sport. <laughs> we've invented this persona for Mark. <laughs> and he... And, and this is the best part, is that we actually had Levin... Levin went over. This this is why it's commingled in your oh, mind. He videotaped he it. He filmed. He filmed it. And so he filmed Mark 
Um, but I've, I've been reacting to me. But this, this is it. Like this, this is this is what made it so choice. So we've invented this persona, and he completely conformed to it. He, like he said the lines that we had said in if, our head. Yeah. If I had written it, it would have gone exactly the same way. Yeah. <laughs> and so he went over and he said, "Hey, Mark." And he's like, "Hey." And he's like, "Are you Mark?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm Mark." And then the guy said, "Do you have any sports cards?" <laughs> And he was like, sports cards. Sports cards. <laughs> and so that's when we knew. Because we thought that maybe he just liked other types of cards. He hates no. sports cards. Well, he, <laughs> the actual dynamic. It's March non fucking sports he cards. He hates sports cards so much. But this is, this is where it passed into legend is after he asked him if he had sports cards and he said no, <laughs> then he asked him if he had Ken Griffey Jr.'s Junior. rated what? rookie. <laughs> well, I, I have to be honest with you. I don't know what that means. I don't either. But I know, but I know that it's a type of card, A, and B is a subset of the sports cards, <laughs> which he already said he didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he must have to deal with people coming in all the time asking well, for sports cards. <laughs> to name done, it, Mark's and he's done everything. You cards. know, you know that like in the late nineties, it was just Mark's cards. It was just Mark's cards, and, he and got he's like, so fucking, fucking sick no, of it. I don't have sports cards. No, what, what do you want? You want Nosferatu? And he had a decision to make. You got MLP. He was like, I either a start Quit. stocking sports cards. Or B, I make the decision right here, right, right now, now <laughs> to be a non-sports cards operation. That's right. That's right. And, and, you know, and the reality is that, you know, we know the historical, you can just look at the historical record. Like, we know how that turned out, right? Oh, yeah. He's the, is he, well, I don't know how to, <laughs> but he, he's, he has a booth at Comic-Con, I guess. I don't yeah, know yeah, anything but, but it's about a, him. It's a non-sports cards booth. Oh, that's yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's the part I'm talking about. It, yeah, it is. But between us and Mark's non-sports cards is this sort of like fallow field of almost like a, a of hell, long boxes. Well, yeah, like a hell maze. No, it's just tables with comic books. You don't perceive it as a maze? I don't perceive it as a fallow field of a hell maze. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better term. I mean, I, I see tables with long boxes and comics. Yeah. But then to the left of that. Maybe it's a little fallow. To the, to the left of that. Jimmy fallow. To the left of those <laughs> World War I trenches was the artist's alley sort of thing. Now, there's two of those. Yeah. There's one artist's alley that is more of the traditional sort all the way down at the end of the hall, which when we first started going to the show, you could actually walk down there in the space of 15 minutes and come back and see and, and have seen something cool, yeah. which made it similar to, it was like a simulation of going to a convention. And that was tasteful. Yeah. But the stuff that was over by us was really more indie press as opposed to Artist um, Alley. artists alley, yeah. which is where you come up and talk to the artists and they sign stuff. But in actuality, a lot of the artists are right there at indie press also. It's just a different, it has a different function. Yeah. The artist alley traditional thing is more of like a, that's just like a ritual. That's like a Comic Con type ritual. Yeah, I was trying to think of anything I would miss about it. Well, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll miss the people that I saw there. Like, it used to be really nice to because we see Notley, a lot of the same people. Totally, Stephen Notley, and, and and they all they suffer there also. You know what I mean? Yeah, they suffer there also. But it was, it was nice because these days we had the We Love Fine booths like sort of connected to us. Yeah. So it was nice to talk to them about some of the new like Valve shit they were putting together. Um, the Cyanide and Happiness guys around the corner were always cool to talk to. It was nice to talk to Jeff. Uh, used to do Wigu. Might still do some Wigu, but it's a lot of Topedo Co. stuff now. I mean, uh, obviously Killer Pumpkins. Ah, Killer Pumpkins, I know. Um, but yeah, like like um, Bob the Angry Flower guy over there in the corner. Yeah. Stephen Notley, if he hears this, I know who you I know who you are. I didn't. I'm not trying to say that you. I don't know who you are. Um, you're wearing the flower on your head. You know that's that's what's going on. So, is there a comic in us not being at Comic Con right now? I think so. I, I it definitely has to be marked. I mean, that was a that was a huge part of our lives for years. 
It was, and I yeah. remember, I mean, it was, it was going down. For, for lack of a better term, it was, it was goddamn near find real jobs a clock. Yeah. The first time we went down there where Kiko, uh, at his Game Skins booth, you know, before, before he worked with us, right? Yeah, he, he ran it. He uh, was a reader, and then skins. he would like, print our shirts, and that was really cool. But, you know, we came down, and he gave us, he gave us the corner of his booth, and we sold those, like the very first like poster we'd ever made. And, you know, that covered, that covered rent. Like rent was dealt with for a couple of months off of that show. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's a really big deal. And that's, that's the thing that I have to remember about that show. I mean, that was, that was before we early, had the... Early well, on. We, we, it was before we had the wherewithal. Like we were not going to... So I could barely make an HTML table. I wasn't in a position to set up a sophisticated merchandise operation. Like yeah. that point, like in that annual coordinate, like that point kept us afloat. Yeah, for, for a few years, it certainly did. These days, like we have, you know, we have the store. Like, you know, if you buy something, Brian will, you know, and his crew will put it in an envelope and they'll send it to you. Yeah, it's like fucking 20 people down yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. But, but back then, not the case. No. Back then, it was just us being assholes, jacking off, making comic strips. Right. I feel like I feel like we know people who are there now. Like I feel like maybe we got out. I feel like you, you poor well, it's forty like, out. It's, it's survivor's guilt. Yeah. Oh God, it's so cold. Like I need, God, I need to close that window. Anytime I see that picture, I know just from the light. <laughs> Eating the Mrs. Fields for breakfast. How cold it is, and then sometimes, sometimes. People would bring coffee, but also sometimes people would just disappear. Yeah, from the booth, and it's like you secretly like you envied them to like you had no idea what happened, right? But you just hoped that they were in a better place. <laughs> then on the last day, I would always go over to the Latin Angels massage booth. No, no, well, you had a bad experience there. I had I always have a bad experience when strangers touch me. I have it. I have that experience every time. You have a now, that's thing different. About that. That's different from like a the social ritual, like a handshaking. I'm not talking about like if I come into contact with another human being. No, you're talking about someone rubbing your shoulders or your back. Well, yeah, because or... you were like, oh man, Latin angels massage. This is this is the massage of a lifetime. Well, it certainly feels good on that last day to get your shoulders, you know, rubbed. Yeah, but I feel like getting massaged is as much of a skill as like massaging. I, I cannot relax into that at all. Huh. I've only had negative experiences anytime someone has done that. Ugh. No, but there was that weird situation where they, they had like a chair. It was like a, massage, like a massage chair? It's not a weird situation. That's how massages work. Oh, okay. But I, yeah, listen, I'm not <laughs> a fucking... fucking you I, sit in the massage chair, yeah. I'm not a massage, you know. But I don't, you must have seen massage chairs... In places, like, it's a chair that you sit in, and then they stand behind you and rub your shoulders and your back. Yeah, I guess I'd never been in it, though. And so you're in there, and then for some reason, like, the position that I was in, sort of like, if you were to, like, squeeze an envelope, and it would sort of, like, open out, like, the lip of it would open out Yeah. from the sides. Well, that's, like, what the back of my shorts were doing. And yeah, because you're, you're leaning over, you're bending over your stomach, so your shirt kind of rides up, and sometimes your pants go out, and your butt crack is there. Well, yeah, and so... And a but, lot of times, you'll feel them just, like, tug your shirt down. And that's... They don't want to look at your butt crack. Listen, and that's nice. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, but that's not what happened. And so... But, of course, since you're inside the place, you have to wear your badge at all times. Yeah. Right? If you're working there, it's Badge City. But it just kept... Like, the badge just, like, kept, like, dipping in... <laughs> it just like the badge was like just a tea bag. Yeah, it just <laughs> was just perpetually sort of um, exploring <laughs> what I, I, it was. It was like a diving bell down and into just, your butt. <laughs> it would just constantly um, slip into your butt crack. <laughs> so you were focused on that, and you couldn't relax. Is what you're it saying? It was like it was like cartography, <laughs> but like for my butt. And, okay, and. It's too nice to study to say, of cars or something. Relaxation was not the result. <laughs> well, that that did not happen. That doesn't happen to me when I visit the Latin Angels. 
I get a different experience. <laughs> and I highly recommend their service. If you're I, at Comic Con ever, no, hey, see listen, the Latin I'm not, Angels booth. Yeah, listen, this has got nothing to do with. And if you're Latin an exhibitor, Angels. they would give you like an extra five minutes or something, which was nice yeah, of them. But in me, that's like, have you ever heard like seven minutes in heaven? Uh huh. Like this term. Yeah. It, this was that would that would be like an extra five minutes in hell. Oh, okay. That, that would only prolong. That would only prolong my suffering. Oh, so <laughs> what? That was seven minutes in heaven made me think of. I think that's where you're supposed to like get in the closet, right? With like a girl. Historically speaking, I mean, this is not. Yeah, I never. I, well, did no. That. It, yeah, exactly. Like that was like something that you know the generation just before us invented, and it seems like a perfectly acceptable invention. I, but well, it's I was, not. I was it, leaving, it wasn't still happening when I was around. No, it made me think of high school, though. And, and I was leaving yesterday, and Jamie was talking to these uh, guys who were helping her uh, with some child's play stuff. Oh, is that that, is, was that that crew that was rolling through yesterday? Yeah, and yeah. their spokesperson is Michelle Morrow. You should look her up. Michelle Morrow? Yeah. She's an actress. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, super pretty. And I went to hi- we went to high school with her. For real? Yeah. No, that name sounds... And they're like, oh, you know, she's our spokesperson now, and she... Did you go to high school, like, with her? And I was like, oh, my gosh, I do. I remember that name. And, like, I think she reached out to me a couple times. We've talked, like, an email. Because she loves games, too. She plays a lot of World of Warcraft. Oh, sure. Um, How could you not? And they're like, ah, oh, you went to school with her? And Jamie's like, I can't believe that you know her. And I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm sure you've seen her. I did not know her in high school. <laughs> like... That was not, I mean, I maybe saw her in high school, but we were not running in the same crowds <laughs> yeah. at that point. Yeah, generally speaking, if a like a pretty girl talked to me in school, it was because they perceived correctly that I was in a despondent, agitated state. <laughs> right? Yeah. They were being cool, and it's appreciated, but that is the extent of it. One time, pretty girls came to talk to me, and they wanted me to draw an invitation for the dance that they were planning. That really? I was not going to. <laughs> you, I'm, but how? But why not? Why did I not go to the dance? Well, we're not going to. Yo, you were not going to go to the dance, but did you draw the picture? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, exactly. When you said you were not going to, I was like, well, listen, what's the downside, man? Oh. You like to draw. <laughs> oh no, I still drew it. There we go. I did, did any opportunity. I had to do stuff around that school. I painted that mural. I remember. I was there. Yeah. I said, hey, I know that guy. I know him. Do you remember when there was that arcade on um, Francis? Yeah. And it was opening up, and he saw that you had, like, you had, like, drawn a picture for them, and he's like, hey, why don't you make a bunch of really big paintings? On my walls. On my walls for nothing. <laughs> no, I think he offered me coffee, because didn't he also have, like, a... Oh, that's right. Indeed, and this is when you began to call it the Cyber Monkey Java Hut. Yeah, because it was Even though that like was a, not technically its name. Some kind of coffee stain. He's like, oh, you can come and get coffee whenever you want. That never, I mean, that never caught on for you, right? Drinking coffee? Yeah, I mean, only in, only in the most, like, gruesome circumstance will you ever drink coffee, right? And yeah. speaking of gruesome circumstances, like, the only time that I have known you to actually drink coffee yeah. is probably at, at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I drink it at PAX too. Uh, on occasion? Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely I I use it like a tool. I don't drink it cuz I like coffee. Like I I will drink it if I have to fucking stay awake or get some energy. Yeah, for me I sort of like if I don't actually use, if it, it's a, still a tool but if I don't use the tool <laughs> even ritualistically <laughs> It's like now it's, it's I think I don't think that's a tool. I think that's called a crutch. <laughs> oh, once you need the tool, once it's a crutch. Once you need the tool, it's a crutch, right? There we go. There we go. All right, hey. So, we can totally do this. I, mean, I, I remember that Scott, I mean, Scott fell out of the whole thing too. He quit like a year or two before we did. Yeah, he quit way before us. And then he would like he, for a little while he would come down and do stuff with the Wheel of Fine booth, but it was very fixed. Yeah. It was like he would come down and like rock it for a couple hours, you know, like like a famous person, right? Which right. He is. I mean, like, well, like like the like what's functionally the traditional model for a, a San Diego type visit, right? Yeah, Kevin Smith isn't sitting at a table all day, right? I'm Sam not saying that Scott is 
as big as Kevin Smith, but I'm saying that, you know. But, that, but that's the model, right? And then yeah, Samwise, he's a famous person. Samwise Gamgee. Yeah. He's not just over there talking about, you know, Mr. Frodo the whole time. Like, no, he comes he, in and he's there for a certain amount of time and then he leaves. Right. I think that was brilliant of Scott. And I think it was good that he finally realized that he should handle it that way. Yeah. That's the right way to do it. Uh, all right. So we're not there. A comic strip about... Well, but it was harrowing, right? Yeah. I mean, it was... Sca- what are we going to do instead? We, like, now we're out. Survivor's guilt was funny. It's definitely a feeling of having escaped something. Yeah. Yeah, that- I, feel, I feel like we have to run raids on SDCC to free these other creators. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like we need to form an organization. There's still people in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's still artists in there. We've got to go back for them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. They had the same chance you did. <laughs> you just have Gabe and Tycho. They're just outside. They're coughing. <laughs> Can't believe we got out of San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, but then people think that it's like on fire or something. They won't. I don't know if they'll get the. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, making a comic about a fire would be the worst way to warn people about fire. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> especially our update schedule is like, you know, basically once every other day or every, you know, two or three days. Yeah. Definitely don't use Penny Arcade as a source of information for fire. <laughs> We're not an early warning system. No, no. <laughs> definitely not okay. Don't do that. We escaped, man. We did it. We are not at San Diego Comic-Con right now. We put them like by a pool or something. <laughs> or out in the backyard. Do a helmet Tyco strip. Yeah. Uh, feels pretty good. There's gotta there's gotta be a way. But also the memories. I feel like I feel like just like remembering it, I feel like is good. Because our the way that we remember it is so is so fucked up. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that's not how people interface with that show at all. Yeah. It, and we never did we never had to do the stuff that I would describe as like really scary, which is where like I remember when the when the Twilight stuff was coming out. Do you remember how long that line was? I remember tents. Yeah, I remember. I remember looking into a tent and seeing like a mom and her kids, fucking in a tent in line outside at outside night. Outside in front. The day before. Yeah, the day before the panel. Like, and this is the thing. Like, people will tell me that we have lines at PAX, and I understand that we have lines, <laughs> but this woman was in a tent the day before. She she was in a tent with her family. With her family, they were living there. They slept in it. God, she's got to dismantle that tent when the line gets going. I guess, and then like move it five feet and then set it back up. Oh, you need that quick setup tent. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, for me, like that. You know, I, I guess I I did not like being in there, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. I mean, that seems worse. There's got to be that wide middle. The show is so popular, right? Yeah. There has to be this wide middle band of people that go to it and enjoy it. Or there's a ritual aspect. I think there's definitely a ritual. I mean, a lot of the people that I've talked to are like, yeah, you know, I've been coming for so long. I come for a day. Yeah, it. that's true. That's definitely true. And, and we saw that last time. Yeah. So we would talk to people and they'd be like, yeah, I just got a one day badge this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think they've also changed I think that they've also changed how you can and how you can attend the show. I think they changed their ticket mix mm. between full show passes and then and they did this after Robert did the same thing for PAX, I think, where there's a lot more of individual day passes for so that new people can come. But what happened here was that I think it seemed like the new people were building up really big sets of passes and then all the people that we remember coming and the people that we've talked to for years and years right yeah they were coming for a day right almost just like a genuflection right just to maintain the ritual not for any real purpose and they didn't seem to be having a good time so to be fair genuflecting has a real purpose it's showing your humbleness before god and he appreciates that uh, yeah. you know you don't have to shit all over genuflecting jc you don't have to be like well oh, your rituals don't mean anything i hate your god <laughs> i'm I'm just, uh, Michael, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if it means anything either. I... It's just the the ritual. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. 
I know that Jesus is, is your Lord. I'm going to put in a good word for you. Thanks. <laughs> I may need it. Yeah, you're going to. When I see him, I'm going to be like, that guy right there, he's all right. Yeah. And Jesus is going to be like, no, no. Wait, him? No. And no, then you have not I'm going to be like, no. Look in here. Trust me. And he's like, look at this file. I'm like, oh my God. Is there like double hell? Yeah, super hell. One of, one of my favorite strips. Of ours? Of ours. Ours? Yeah. Is the double hell one. Do you remember it? Mm-mm. Oh my God. It is one of my no favorite memory. strips. Oh, it's, it's when we were talking about when you were still running your campaign. Uh-huh. And uh, I was talking to you about how, about the Shadowfell. So the, the Shadowfell didn't used to be a thing, but then when we started playing D&D, sort of in that four... Oh, yeah, this was the diagram where you broke, exactly. broke down with, well, like, the under hell. Well, exactly. So it's like, now that the characters have emerged from the Cave of Tits, have you considered <laughs> sending them to the Shadowfell or someplace worse? And Gabe's like, how can something be worse than the Shadowfell? Doesn't that mean dark bad? <laughs> and then Tycho says, technically the dark bad is situated below the shadow dark. <laughs> and he says, you're full of shit. He says, no, serious, I'll draw you a picture. And then the real... The real schedule for evil zones goes shadow fell, shadow dark, dark bad, <laughs> shadow, shadow bow battle. <laughs> <laughs> shadow, shadow bow battle. And then it's double hell. And then, and then, it's, and then it's scary town. <laughs> That it's, was a good strip, I it's remember. Scary Town, and then Cape uh, <laughs> says, wow, Scary Town must be a real shithole. <laughs> Tycho says, well, it depends on when you go, but I bet that any time you go any to Scary Town... Year, I don't think anything is ever in bloom. I don't think there's, I don't think there's ever a good time, like the, um, the vacation sort of like tourism department of Shadow Hell. I don't or, think there's a blueberry festival. No. No, it, it would have some dark mirror of the Blueberry Festival. <laughs> <sighs> we have to make a strip. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I'm, I'm ready to go. So, um, yeah, I feel like I feel like dark memories. So this is us. Well, because it's basically just trauma, right? Reminiscing. Yeah, whatever the opposite of reminiscing is. Reminiscing. Right? What's that? Reminiscing. Reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. I love it. Might not be. Neminiscing. <laughs> that that pleases me <laughs> so well. We need to. Is, are you are you having are you are you having SDCC flashbacks? <laughs> because I'm having SDCC flashbacks. Because <laughs> it's basically when, every time I see those images, it's basically what it is. Like I feel it's like it's like when you used to think about like when it was summer vacation and you were thinking about school. Yeah, when I see the Lego sculpture specifically, I get like a knot in my stomach. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I feel like bone ice yeah. forming in my joints. Yeah, I mean, maybe Tycho can say that. He's like, I, whenever I, I, you know, I can't avoid all the the media coming out of the show. The pictures, whenever I see one of these pictures, it's like I feel ice <laughs> forming around my bones. <laughs> I feel the ice begin to encase my bones. <laughs> No, dark ice. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not even going to SDCC, to San Diego Comic-Con, and we still can't escape it. I saw, a picture, I saw a picture of the show on Twitter, and I shit myself. No, no, and I just started to shit. <laughs> I just started to shit. <laughs> what do you... Yeah, I know how you feel. No, I mean, I, sh I shit my pants. And I didn't stop. I didn't stop. My, my pants are... I don't know where it's coming from. I'm still shitting right no, wait, now while no, I'm no, talking I don't know where it's you. coming from. It can't be the result of a biological process. <laughs> <laughs> Even now as I speak to you, I'm shitting. I am becoming shit. <laughs> it's running down my pants. All I am is shit. You should go to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this has anything to do with Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> 
Hold well, on, what did you say? I'm sorry, I was trying to write some other line. <laughs> Tiger says, you should go to the doctor. And Gabe says, yeah, I don't think this has anything to do with Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god now I hurt that hurts my body <laughs> yeah I don't think this has anything to do <laughs> oh. no, I, saw, I saw a picture oh Mork <laughs> so, and I just started shitting <laughs> it won't stop oh uh, no you feel I just, no I mean I it I just started to shit <laughs> I'm I'm still shitting. I don't know where it's coming from. It can't be the result. <laughs> it can't be the result of any biological process. <laughs> it makes no sense. You should go to the doctor. Yeah, I don't think this has anything to do with coughing. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm really sick. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, yeah gonna. I'm gonna. I don't think this has anything to do with coughing. Oh God. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this has anything to do with Comic Con. <laughs> uh, you're hurting my body, man. <laughs> that was a funny one. Uh, uh, we're not even going to Com San Diego <sighs> Comic Con, and I oh, can't escape it. We laugh once a day here. <laughs> the coverage is incessant. <laughs> every every time I see it in my feed. <laughs> yeah. I feel dark ice begin to encase my bones. Yeah, man, I saw a picture on Twitter, and I just started to shit. <laughs> started to shit. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm still shitting now. It won't stop. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> it can't be the result of any biological process. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> Man, you should talk to a. I guess you, you should talk. You should talk you to should a doctor. You should go to the hospital. <coughs> you no. You should go immediately to the hospital. I'm gonna. I don't think this has anything to do with Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like still dealing with it, like on his face. Oh yeah, this is gonna be super yeah, man, fun. I saw a picture on Twitter, and I just started to shit. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> I'm just shitting and shitting. <laughs> just shitting and shitting. <laughs> just shitting and shitting. It can't be the result of any biological process. It makes no sense. <laughs> go immediately to the hospital. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't think this has anything to do with Comic Con. <laughs> That's good. Ship it. Oh, when I cast the pot, it's like I cast the rod Keeping it hard like a motherfucker gas robot I'm really caught, today's fresh catch I mean a podcast, something about nets Yes, it gets better when it's winter I'm fettered by my fish gear Catch and release, get in that crease when my fish near Talk about a plant best laid off that stray And yes, I crave that tuna with his peck fins blade But while I'm glistening from the whole sea You better listen into TLC I got that, I got that wild caught salmon It's tender and it's moist Downloadable content, a podcast of choice Yes. <laughs>